Cause it's just loose lips I try better than I sing So go ahead and enjoy So yeah, I it's called That's Manchester TV and we launched, it must have been 2015 now. Yeah, so we launched and I just put the pitch. There was a lot of pictures I pitched them. There was a big breakfast style breakfast kind of program, which would have been great because I've always loved like Denise Van Outen, Kelly yeah. Brook, Johnny Vaughan, Chris Evans, that kind of era. I'm much a, a kind of 90s chick in that sense. But then they kind of like that fizzled out and they wanted more news sort of see sort of straight down the line news. And then mine, I thought, well, Gemma, you love the theatre. You're always at the theatre. You mates with loads of actors and presenters and soap stars. So why not make a show about it? People might be interested in what they've got to say, which it turned out they did. So how long did that run for? Um, well, my chat show ran for about two and a half years, Ben. But the thing was, it never kind of came to an end. I never quit. Um, I actually had another show alongside that, which was a comedy show called Gem and Cole's Super Duper Show. So my friend Jason Manford, has, his brother Colin Manford is also a stand-up comic. and Yeah, he's a, he's he, a booker as well, and he's a comedy booker. Yeah, for Manfred's Comedy Nights. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So he was, we, we had this idea about pranking people and doing sketches, but we didn't have the budget. As you know, local TV, everything's done on a shoestring. <laughs> yeah, you're not in agreement there. Definitely. So we decided to just, I like my show, my arts and culture show, was a kind of this is your life about local actors, writers, directors, creative freelancers in Manchester, musicians, bands. So we decided the comedy show could be a spin on that and it kind of plugged stand-up comedy in Manchester. So the stand-up comics would come in to the studio and we'd interview them, sort of like a bit of a backstage green room type. Tell us the gossip, what you up to, where you're gonna be gigging. Uh, then a sketch would happen, then Colin would usually prank me, then we'd have social media requests, and we'd have a social media corner with Alvin, who'd be reading out the tweets live. And it really kind of was, it, you, could, you know, it's 2015, so it wasn't, it's like five years ago, whereas that really wasn't happening as it is now, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. It seems like it had a, it would have had a good energy as well, because I think sometimes that's what local TV can suffer. It can suffer in not giving the accent of the city, and it can suffer by not by trying to be too straight laced. Yeah, yeah, I agree, I agree. And the content on that channel was great. It gave you the news you wanted, but it needed some some kind of character and colour as well. Um, yeah, because so, you, you are, you oh, are, even though it's local, you are still competing against all the other channels. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And, and I think with that, as I say, I, I'm going to be so kind of honest now, I'd love to bring that back then, but my life can kind of took a bit of a different direction. I got the opportunity to go on a cruise ship and travel the world as a presenter. Now, I hate having regrets. I'm such a believer in it. You know, I'm very ambitious, but I'm also, I don't want to have regrets that I never did it. And I thought, well, I was young, well, I was single, well, I was kind of fit enough uh, because I know how hard it is on cruise ships. Then I should really embrace that. So I did veer away from it, but I had two and a half years of wonderful guests. I've got friends for life. I've got memories. I've got inspiration. I've got I carry that every day with me now, and that is so deep and blowing cliche, isn't it? But it really, it meant the world. That, that show to me was my baby. Cause it's just love.